Okay, well, camp was just up over there somewhere. So we were walking for, oh, not very long, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it really wasn't far, down to the river, which we can cross, I think, just over there without too much difficulty, or we'd cross here. There's various places to cross here. What did concern me, when I was walking down, I, I saw this huge gorge thing. So we'll just uh, carefully make our way down to this gorge here. There's a, a little pool there that Lassie has uh, found. <laughs> oh God. Lassie, come on, wait a minute. And again, you could probably cross over there if you had to, but I must admit, when I was walking down, the first thing that I saw in the distance was this gorge. And I was thinking, <laughs> what is it with this place? Leslie, come back here. Everywhere. Ooh, Leslie, come back. Everywhere is, uh, <laughs> is a gorge. Oh my neck. Lassie, come back here. Come on. Look at that thing through there. That's uh, quite something. All the way down through there. <laughs> That's quite pretty, to say the least.
we've probably found somewhere to camp is quite literally on top of this grassy knoll thing here. There's uh, not that many obvious spaces. Maybe if we stayed down by the river and and sort of followed the, the river up away, you know, we might find somewhere up there. Uh, but that riverbed looks pretty dry, I have to say. That you probably would get water, but it does look a dry riverbed. So I don't really fancy going all the way up there, then finding there's no water, and then you're kind of stuck a little bit. Whereas here, whilst there's not any water, you know, very close, there is a, a, a little stream just down in this small valley here so probably like you know two minute two or three minute walk from here and also that's hard not sort of hill over there so i am kind of thinking that tomorrow we'll have a bit of a rest today and then tomorrow we'll go down collect water and then head up that way and then try and find somewhere to camp up there tomorrow so that we've got a last push hopefully not too far from the car down on saturday and then we'll kind of see how it goes i think we will <laughs> we're taking a bit of a chance on that one as i say but i, I think we'll get I think we'll get down from it. So you're probably wondering where in amongst all of this grass are we going to pitch? Well, the beauty of the trail star is, and of course bringing literally just a bivy with me, you know, as long as you can find one small flat area, and it took a little bit of searching, I have to say, we've, we've been looking over all of these hills around here. There was, one spot down uh, a little bit further down but you're potentially more likely to get someone down there although realistically a really unless it's a runner or you know a lone walker out here i don't think you're going to get too many people out here to be honest so basically i was looking and walking and there's one flat area just here now obviously it's not perfect but it is coffin shaped <laughs> you probably would get a six foot coffin in there i'm not sure about your tents and things like that but i think your trail star will fit over that and kind of thinking to lie at the back because the wind seems to be coming from the south so that kind of works out well. There's a little bit of a dip here. It's not the most even. In fact, there's quite a big dip there. It's not the... <laughs> My foot goes down there. It's not the most even or the best of spots. It has to be sad. I think what I'd probably end up doing there is stuffing a coat or something like that in that gap there when my foot's sinking in there. I think it'd be okay. I think if you if you stuff a coat in there, stuff a coat or something like that in that gap, then I think you will be then I think you will be okay. We've got plenty of time. I mean, if it doesn't work, then we can always, you know, collapse it back down again and, you know, and find somewhere else. But I, I think we can, I think we'll make it work. <laughs> Let's put it that way. All right, <laughs> we'll, we'll get cracking. Here we are by camp. We've got Lassie splashing. She's obviously found this stream. We took water just 
from that little downlet there and camp is really just over there on top of that little knoll it's like two or three minutes walk away and our water is flowing literally off these hills here down there down into that valley down there it's been a pretty easy lazy day today where's oh <laughs> i wonder where she was she's up there well i will say good evening to everybody we've not as i expected seen anyone up here i would have been very surprised if someone had <laughs> walked across this knoll here there's uh there's nothing up here at all so it's being very very quiet i saw two people sort of walk across and down and i've seen two people walk up and that's it and that's obviously in the far far distance i've made a tea i'm going to finish that tea given that it's seven i think it's going to be time to blow the air bed up and get you know get inside just uh sort things out a bit because i think last night i fell asleep about half past nine, ten, and it didn't. It doesn't actually get dark until about ten forty-five, something like that. It's uh, it's ridiculous up up here. It just it seems to stay light almost all, almost forever. Luckily, we're not being bombarded by buzzing insects which is good we're not really near we're not that near water and we're not really that near you know boggy areas either so that probably that probably helps you know quite a lot i haven't really done so much video this you know this trip it's been a, a bit of a chilling out <laughs> A bit of a chilling out trip, 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 trip. But the sun's just, you know, there's still another, well, so it's seven o'clock. So my guess is over two hours still, I mean, effectively, it's still three hours of daylight because it's, uh, it's seven o'clock and sunset is 9.50. And then twilight, 10.45. So seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's not going to get dark for a very long time. So 10.47 twilight. And then 3.41 is when it gets, uh, is when twilight appears in the morning. 3.41. To 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. So, <laughs> so five hours of, of night. As I've said before, it's kind of, it's kind of surprising in a way. I know it sounds, uh, it sounds silly, but I always find it kind of fascinating that, you know, like now we're sitting outside in broad daylight, seven o'clock in the evening and still effectively three hours of of daylight left and yet in the middle of winter it would have got dark just after four and we'd have been huddled up inside for three hours so rather than waiting another three hours for dark it would have been dark three hours ago i've always i just always find that bizarre fact fascinating boring maybe but <laughs> Yeah. But fascinating. Well, we're tucked up. Well, we're not actually tucked up. We're, we're sitting on the sleeping bag inside. It's that warm. And just to give my shirt 
a bit of a breather and taking it off. And the good old rain has decided to welcome us into the evening. We got a nice hot cup of tea. And we'll kind of see how this high pitch does us with this rain. Now it's not windy. So the rain is pretty much coming straight down. But obviously we will have to keep half an eye on, on that wind and make sure that it doesn't you know that it doesn't blow in but we've got the super light bivy obviously it shows how absolutely huge this thing is so that's my foot end and that's one dog and that is still inside well inside the trail star i've put the little bernie thing there and hopefully that will keep away most of the bitey things there's a couple of bitey things up there oh, and get that. but mostly they're disappearing that's the my head end i'm going to try and move it that way slightly it's not the best of pitches here I have to say there was always an element of a bit of a prayer going on with this pitch now what I have done as I mentioned to you the ground was awful there's a huge dip down here so basically I put my waist thing I put my waterproof, my wind shirt, I put my sleeping bag liner. So a whole load of stuff I've put here, which is basically filling up that hole there. And obviously come night time, I can hook that up to there. And then that will give some protection around there if this rain you know holds up the entire time I don't really know what it's going to do exactly we'll kind of see so like I said so you've got that down <laughs> that end there and then I've still got this much headroom lying down here. So, you know, oodles of, oodles and oodles of space. And an inner, I do have the inner. I'm just not yet quite confident enough to bring the inner to the Lake District, just in case I need a very low pitch, because I don't think it will pitch brilliantly, you know, very low with that D zip, the letter D, inverted D. I really do think it would be better with a T zip, and then you could kind of like zip up, and if you have to, put bungee cord around the top you're actually better off with a t-zip so it's kind of a shame that MLD went with that that d-zip formation I, I do hope they go back to a you know a, a you know an, an inverted t letter t for tango I just think that is uh a much better option there's a few bitey bugs floating around when i'm
camping, I always bring a long sleeve shirt and long trousers. I very, very rarely camp with a short shirt, you know, short sleeve shirt and, you know, in shorts because you're, you're out in the elements the whole time. So you really want to be, I think anyway, personally for me, covered up, you know, as much as possible within reason. Otherwise you've got to slather sun cream on your legs and your arms. And I guess you're more susceptible to ticks and things like that. And when you get into your night leggings and that type of thing, you're kind of, uh, you know, you haven't got like a ton of sun cream all over your arms and your legs and everything. It just, I think it makes the whole experience, makes the whole experience just, you know, a little bit more enjoyable, I think. Okay, well, it's gone eight o'clock. And that's the only thing we're sitting outside for so long. I've not actually eaten. So I think the next thing to do is to put my food on. Now today, I'm going to try spicy couscous. Now it says with with sunflower seeds, mixed spices and chilli. So we'll kind of give that a whirl. 100 add, place the contents. Hang on a minute. Place the contents, so contents of the sachet into a bowl. Add 160 ml of boiling water, stir well, cover with the lid. Leave to stand for three to five minutes to allow the couscous to absorb the water. Fluff the couscous with a fork to separate the grains. Serve immediately. We'll give uh, this couscous, couscous a chance and see. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I can actually see myself. Um, my eyes are they're okay for distance, but. For close-up things, everything's a bit, a bit, bl a bit blurry. All right, so we're going to try couscous. I'll let you know. So we put all the couscous in, the whole packet. I put half a packet of Mediterranean. I think it was a bit. I don't know if it got damp. It was a bit solid, so I hope it's okay. But anyway. Mediterranean inspired roasted vegetables, which is basically just a powder and some dried garlic. Oh, and that chorizo. So I've got a little bit of chorizo left for tomorrow now. And basically that is now in this pot. The chorizo, I take the uh, skin off it. Lassie eats that bit. I can't imagine I do any harm. Um, I just break it up with my fingers then. On the packet, it said 160 ml of water. I did about 200. All right, well, I'm going to carry on eating this. And it cooked quickly too. I just boiled the water and then added the um, couscous, waited a couple of minutes and it was done pretty much. Good morning, it's 20 to one. Lassie has suddenly got excited because we've said good morning to you. But uh, sometimes you have such a still day that you can kind of <clears throat> half pack and half be not packed <coughs> and just collapse the shelter 
on top of everything as it were and then you've got all the space in the world to do your last little bit of packing now I can stand up in my shelter and <laughs> not even a trail star is that tall obviously you know just make sure that there isn't any wind that your rubber you know that your foam mat can't blow away in the breeze or anything and obviously just make sure that your shelter can't blow away one thing I did just make sure obviously and that is there is still at least one peg holding it in place there so basically i'm going to have a little bit more of a tidy up here there's a tiny bit of a breeze picking up here so i am just going to get that put away and get something way down on this foam mat you know just to be on the safe side as it were I think probably that water will suffice <clears throat> and then I think some cheese and crackers and some more tea are in order I'm going to get the shelter put away have a little bit of a tidy up here and then we will catch up later <laughs> 